reward button and I will I will welcome you all. Welcome, Darren's joining us. Welcome you all to today's webinar, Tuesday webinar. Here I am on behalf of the Humber and East Yorkshire Growth Hub. And as it's my want, because I am uh, acting and delivering this business as part of the business support program, for the next moment or two, I hope you don't mind if I just take you through some of the things that you can benefit from. Now, the Hull and East Yorkshire Local Enterprise Partnership is here to help. And, and really, I'm, I'm here delivering this webinar under the Grow My SME program, which is fully uh, funded. And it is very much designed with three things in mind, financial growth, ICT, and I'm here for business growth scheme. And really, there is a lot of one-to-one -one support. And I say this the last few weeks, if you're ever to do anything, and please make sure you know, become friends of your local advisor. They are a fantastic help and they can signpost you to lots of help. So if you want some one-to-one -one help, not me to, even me to darken your door, I can do that for some one-to-one -one support under the Grow My SME Business Growth Programme. There's some fantastic stuff for technology and for finance. So please do that. And there's also Rachel to talk to, I think is on the webinar today, who can really signpost you and help you to the support that you need. Here I am, for, I'm back again on a Tuesday, but we're going to be let loose soon. Here we are. All right, said it was Freedom Day, so we're out. I mean, I'm out. Even I've been allowed out today. So on the 3rd of August, two weeks today, we'll be doing some face-to-face. -face. So please look out on the event bright under Grow My SME, and you'll find us doing workshops on every Tuesday throughout August on marketing, digital marketing, social media sales. We're going to take place at the Hallmark Hotel or the Humber View Hotel in North Ferrybrick. So, as it, to choose a, a phrase from Fred Pontin, Curly. And for those of you who are under, under 60, that was lost on you. But I only remember it because my granddad told me about it. Anyway, so please, uh, uh, please uh, join us. And I have been really lucky, you know, I um, see I'm, today I'm doing the webinar. Yesterday I went on my own course. I went on a course. Yeah, it was um, a teach, teach Yourself Semaphore. And after an hour, I was absolutely flagging. Um, and then I was thinking about going on a positive thinking course, but they're not going to be terrible. So anyway, let's, let's move swiftly along. Uh, today, as always, we, um, today's webinar is being recorded. You will get a copy of the slides and you'll get a copy of the recording. But as always, you can't have, you can't have Tuesday without out a little quiz. As every server say, there is a prize if you get them all right. Yes, it's a night out with Green Hull. And there was a second prize, which is two nights. Um, so if you have anything to say, fire away on the chat line. And as it, it's all about blogging, what are we going to talk about? It's called Next two minutes, guess the famous writer. Guess the famous, but now, not easy, not intended to be easy, but does anyone here know who that is? Anybody know? And you can't Google these answers while you sit. Wait, good. Anyone know that? I want to take a stab at this very famous author. Oh, not a, not even Derek knows this one. Anyone? Anyone? You've read his books? Uh, tell you what, a bit hard on it to start with. Ernest Hemingway. What's up next? What's up next? Oh, we got it right. Anne Marie, you saved the day. Well done. So Anne Marie is, in, is, in, is still, on, still on course with the quiz. Right. Who's that then? Who is that? Uh, neither be a twist in this quiz. Anyone know who that is? Mm -hmm. We've had a contrived link already, anyone? Yeah, Derek got it. And Rachel, yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, in none other than the great one and only Charles Dickens. Fantastic life story. His, his books used to, be, used to be in pamphlets, like on a, week, like on a weekly basis. 
And the things like the signal, signal man, he wrote as a short story after a, after a trip on a train. There we go. And well worth a trip to his home in Portsmouth. Right. Oh. Who's this then? He's the only. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Eric's on it. Darren's on it as well. It is none other than JK. What a story. Rags to riches with no plum. I was in Edinburgh about two years ago, and there were people taking pictures of the cafe where she wrote her book forward at the first book, I should say. Not, you know, I've never read any myself. Sorry about that. Right, who's up next? Now, this is not easy. Tell you what, they're not easy today. Who is that? Yeah. An easy quiz, no doubt. Yeah. Quiz and a webinar, never the twain shall meet. This gentleman was once, oh, I've got it. Oh, I, oh I've already had pr Proust. We've already met, I've already mentioned his name in a contrived reference. He said, this gentleman said, when he came to America, I have nothing to declare except my genius. I said that and I ended up with two hours in customs. Who is it? Mark Twain. Yeah, Mark Twain. Yeah, he'll probably film all that sort of stuff. Ooh, oh, not a picture. Oh, this one. Not a picture. It's a portrait. Who's that then? Who's that? Anyone know that? Does Anna read that one? Derek know that one? My money's on Darren. He knows it. He knows it. He's read, he's read them all. He's read them all. This is where, I'll give you a clue. I'll jump, jump, jump in a lake with you just with you wearing the white shirt. That's a clue. Today's clue. Which you do, of course, uh, when especially when it's warm. And what have we got? What have we got? One of the Brontes, honestly. Jane Austen. Yeah, well, oh, thank you, Rachel. I can rely on you. Well read. Well read. I think, uh, I think this is it. Let, let, oh, now, and if you haven't read one of her books, Honestly, on the naughty step. So this is the this is today's last one, and then there were none. Yeah, Jane Austen. Honestly, you can't. Ah, oh, thank you, Andrew. Enid Blyton. Oh, Enid Blyton. I've already, I've already done the and then there were none uh, joke. Yeah, yeah. One of them. It was. I give you a clue. Went missing in Harrogate. I did actually want to and um, I was doing my uh, learning to drive. Uh, but there, yes, Dame Agatha Christie. I think was overtaken by J.K. Rowling, wasn't she? As the most well-read authoress. I think so. Don't know. And last one, last but not least, you've all read this book. <laughs> this this answer is absolutely elementary. Who's that famous author? Nice moustache, wouldn't it? Mm. Come on. Oh, right, I've had it. We've done the elementary reference. What else can I think of? I don't want to hound you into an answer. Does anyone know this one? Oh, we don't. There. Yeah. Arthur Conan Doyle. He or Sherlock Holmes. Now, what's the link between Arthur Conan Doyle and Charles Dickens? Do you know this one? I see it every time in the pub quiz. Well, both authors. Yeah, I know that. Both lived in Portsmouth. I must point out, I am not paid anything by, uh, thank you, Derek, uh, got that right, not paid anything by the Portsmouth tourist for being saying that. But I used to live down there, so I do know the, the lie of the land. Anyway, less of this, less of this tomfoolery. Let's move on and talk about blogging, of which all the aforementioned did a version of. So not a daft question to ask. What is a blog? Well, if anyone has any questions, please use the chat line. But for the next 35 minutes or so, I'm going to be your host. Your blog is no other than a compilation of thoughts, or facts, expert opinions relating to the business, industry, or audience. So you are perceived in many ways to be a what is known in modern parlance as a thought leader. I love blogging, and it doesn't have to be written. You cannot pick it. Now, the benefit really for small businesses, it's well, it's well documented. 
that if you publish regular content on your website, you're likely to receive more traffic. It can reduce marketing spend and it will help you achieve more leads. Google likes you to publish content on your website. It's a great way of bringing in traffic. It's a great way of bringing in and showing you to meet the Google algorithms, such as Google Eat, expertise, authority, trustworthiness. So that is a huge benefit. So I think I've answered the question, but I'll tell you more. Tell you more. Why should we blog? That was, that was almost a Jimmy Cricket impression. So blogging is really part of a content marketing strategy. And really, it, you are here to create value for customers. And you are selling your product in a non-salesy way. You're an educationalist. You are somebody who is giving out valuable information. And that will be a common thing to think of it that way. It isn't a pitch. It goes back some time. If you go back to the, the, the Gillette the safety razor, there we look at that. That was a form of block, even though it was a bit of a gift there, but it was, it was talking you know, very much in that mold. And then it, things have moved on. You can see that even now on the, the Gillette website, there's lots of information there, but you can see it's not necessarily salesy. The one minute read, five steps to a smooth change. And that's almost alliteration, that's smooth shape. So it's giving you the, uh, giving you the, uh, the uh, reasons to uh, show. Do you know, could, can I have a, can, am I allowed to do a quick anecdote? I think I am. My, my brother used to work for Gillette UK. He did. You know, in his contract, he, he wasn't allowed, I'm going to whisper this, he wasn't allowed to have a moustache. Do you know that? I think that might not get through the employment law and it's mustachist if such a word exists. But there you go. It's a bit like working for Disney. A friend of mine worked for Disney and they didn't get through initially through the audition because they had a tattoo. If you're a Disney worker in the theme park, you can't have a tattoo, or visible tattoo, I should say. There we go. Yeah. Right. So even the likes of Airbnb, you know, the reason why they blog is building up trust. And the answer that question, why guests book? But then it's, it's going deeper than product and price. And you know, in, in this situation here, this very much is offering value to customers. You can see from the blogs there, it's promoting. The, the, the different things you can do. Often you see it in, in like to try to give people in fashion world and in, in lifestyle inspiration, but it also it's extremely valuable. I have covered this in previous webinars, search engine optimization. Look at that, what's on the screen there. For those of you not on the screen, I'll, I will read out. A blog can often be a question and an answer. It's very keyword friendly. So asking a question and answering it can come in the form of a blog, which can be a landing page on your website. It may be extremely applicable, this idea, again, about blogging being thought leadership and about education, but also to drag traffic in. What to do after a car accident is a question we may well do. May I will ask at some stage. Also, it's a fantastic way of building up a database. So people are subscribing, we'll come on to call to action in a minute, subscribing to your website. There is an opportunity to collect data, GDPR friendly, and promote it. I think of your web, uh, blog very much in that way. And even likes of Tesla. Mine, mine's, uh, mine's parked outside, uh, just in case you're wondering. And uh, you know, how track mode works. Again, just visibility, look at that, AI, you can even test drive it, there we are. But also, if you want to be thought of as an influencer or to reach other influencers, you've got the opportunity to use your blogs to create that kudos and that credibility and to be perceived as an influencer. And we'll come on to that a little bit later, we'll talk about how to promote your blog. So, 
and most importantly you can stay ahead of your competition so it's just a very much of a managing the money financial block but a great way um, Paul has got cut off slightly five common cash flow management mistakes you can avoid great great title great image and you know straight in there and again it's positioning your business accordingly so some real important reasons to blog so how many of you are sitting there on a sunday morning thinking this very thing what shall i blog about well here is probably the thing i know that old bloke simon tells us every tuesday we've got a blog so what i'm going to talk about well have you all got now come on interactive moment i'm going to reach with my glass of water come on come on everyone get yourself a piece of paper come on i'm watching you you all got a blank sheet of paper you have right you know, the other day actually on this subject um I, I was going to watch the um the world origami championships but then i discovered it was pay-per-view yeah do you know the um the, uh, there, are, there are some real um, uh, the real advantages to simple origami, yeah, the, the twofold. Anyway, so by now you've all got a piece of paper. Yep, not yeah. Okay, what are we going to do with it? Right. On one side of the paper, write down the five most frequently asked questions about your product or service. This is homework, it's a very short amount of time. So write those things down. On the other side, Write the five questions you believe people should be asking about your product. Okay? Five most frequently asked questions, ones you like people to be asking. And voila! Yes. As if by magic, you have 10 things to blog about. If you are struggling, this is where you can find a friend to help you. Just come at those things. Ten blogs, and there you are. There's almost a year's blogging. We'll have August and December off, and you've got yourself your monthly blogs. So, there you make, so there's your homework, and you can hand it in to teach you next week. So, but you can also, we don't want you struggling manfully. Look at this. I've got a few little tips. Look on Amazon's book previews, and look at the chapter titles. There is great information there. You can see what's trending, what's coming up. And how about, I mention it just about every week, Google Trends. Go into the Explore option on your subject area and get those little fingers working on the keyboard. Off you go. So see what people are searching for. And how about, the, I always have to feel this, I'm going to sip of water before i attempt to say hashtagify me you're looking for variations or topic areas in a hashtag form so people may be using the hashtag in the long tail searches or how about the good old searches related to get to the, type something in get to the bottom of your search page and there you have lots of titles things to write about so, got your piece of paper, you've got your origami, you've got your 10 things to write about, and you've got some other little tips. So, without further ado, we're going to come on to how to write a blog post. Isn't it nice to see people working together there in harmony? Yeah. Doesn't it bring back memories? You know, when I was at school, we had ink wells. They were full as well. Gosh. Anyway, first things first. Your blog is not about you writing. It is about you writing for your audience. When JK and Mark Twain and, and all the others were writing, I think they had a vision in mind probably of what they wanted to achieve, but also thinking about what your audience would like to see and to read. So think about doing some audience research. I know Derek's on the call, meditation is the name of a game in, in, in this particular sector. So there's maybe lots of blogs in that particular marketplace, lots of online forums, Facebook groups, and the aforementioned Google Alerts. 
It's all around you what people are talking about. You can go onto Twitter and look at all things that are trending at the moment. But maybe a lot of those are 24 hour and newsworthy. Here is something a little bit more deeper. And then you choose a topic to write about. So knowing about your audience and the thirst for what they want. And then we choose that topic. So today, as always, think about this. Our chosen example, because it is, you know, it's Okay, not far from afternoon tea time is a good old chocolate chip cookie. And just think the type of topics you can write. The first and foremost is a how to blog. It's very much for I'm not a great, I'm not a great baker myself. I, I use the uh, use a smoke alarm as a timer. But you can write here how to bake chocolate chip cookies. Hard to say that. How to bake chocolate chip cookies from scratch. So it's a big classic how-to. But then, you know, you can also go into a curated list. Your blog could be the top, I'm having, I'm gonna struggle again, the top chocolate chip cookie recipes. All the different variants and the little uh, ingredients in there. And then, you see, it could also be tips and advice, much in the same way a lot of um, sort of Nigella type things, expertise. Tips for making chocolate chip cookies extra gooey. I do like it like that. You know, I do get excited when you have this, you know, you, you, have, you bite into it and the chocolate is still gooey. Isn't that nice? Right, but back, back, to, back to what I was talking about. Right, here we go. And then also, you know, um, it could be just very much definition based, you know, the meaning of the term, you know, how it's all come about, coming to the history. You know, and what are no bake? There's, there's probably hundreds of ways in which uh, you can um, bake. And then, you know, trending stuff. What's popular? The most popular recipes, um, the best chocolate chip cookies. You know, you might find people liking them. It could be you might find a picture of David Beckham eating one. You know, who knows? There's so much you can do. Just taking a, what may be classified as a fairly simple. Uh, chocolate chip cooking, baking, in all the different ways. You might think of adopting these in terms of lists, and advice, and tips, and approaching things from a different angle. But equally importantly, you want to think about, write about keyword research. And here we are. Look at that screenshot. And you can see where how to make chocolate chip cookies was our, our starting point, our watermark, our benchmark. But look at that, you see, you know, all the different things that you may wish to talk about. And that is purely picked up arithmetically, scientifically, from what people are searching for. Now, I, I, I think, you know, how to make chip, chocolate chip cookies without an oven, you know, maybe there's a like, use them in the microwave or uh, down at the river with a stone. Who knows? Lots of different ways to, to, to do it without eggs. <laughs> I'm making without eggs, you know, because I'm not, anyway, I've gone through that cathartic, I can't bake moment. So uh, you can see all the different ways. Your answers are in Google printing this and off you go. So it's an experimentation there. But the key thing now is this, right engaging content. Now, if you look, I've named some world famous authors who'll be around long after I've shuffled off this mortal coil. Really, you know, and I, uh, I did get an O level in English, did you? <coughs> Great to see, I think we to do that. The right engaging content. Think of it. Think of it. I was like, oh, how many of you going? Ah, oh, little tabby there on the screen. Think of your blog as being like a cat. All right, you know, think of it as being like a cat. Structure a head, a body, and a tail. Head, body, and tail. So the head is very much the headline. You want to grab your readers attention but you can do it without being you know a wordsmith by just taking from you know how to make chocolate chip cookies or eggs or whatever your chosen subject is 
And then the body of the text, which is a cat's body in effect, is about your, your, how you're going to share your information, what you're really talking about. And then the tail is the closing thoughts. So the head, the body, and the tail. And very much, you can also choose pictures. I always quote, like the newspapers, think of it as a headline, an image, and then the body of the text. So one of the best ways often, and what I'm not for one minute suggesting plagiarizing or anything like that, but read as much as you can. And you, then you become you know, an authority in your field. You see how other people write, and yet you adapt your style accordingly. But you need to choose the same principles as head, body, and tail. But critically, just some tips here. Um, I would always give credit um, to, my, uh, to my sources, for me, dad jokes. Um, but, you know, also critically, if you're going to post it on your website, it does provide a fantastic opportunity to do the basic SEO, to create links between the blog, or maybe landing page, and other pages within your website. Also, that you may wish to link out. So if you were talking about baking, you may link out to something else. It's absolutely critical that that opens in a new window, which many of you may be using WordPress, but please make sure any links open your window. Otherwise, people will leave your site, which is poor for SEO, and you know, make sure that happens. Critically, remember, remember we had to face this. Oh, I'm dreadful at school. You know, try and fill a page of A. How many have to try and do that? Try and fill a page of A4. Right, writing. So, but here, this is what Google wants us to do 300 words. Now, it's not as many as you think. Most sentences wouldn't pass 20 words. You can see that. You see, you're writing really four or five paragraphs, you know, 20, 20 words. Voila, you've got that. So, try and get past that 300 word mark. Many other uh, blogs may have a little note at the top saying three minute read, five minute read. So you might wish to put it that way. Nobody wants to be faced with having to read the equivalent of um, some convoluted highbrow novel. So think about that. And, and really formatting, absolutely critical. Nobody wants to see you know, the, the equivalent of the Magna Carta. If you break the long posts into intersections. That reminds me of the story, a true, I believe, when an American tourist turned up at Runnymede and joined the tour there, and they're going to see the Magna Carta, and he asked the question, when was the Magna Carta signed? And the tour guide said, 1215. And the American tourist looked at his watch and said, oh, we missed it by three quarters now. And also, you can see the Magna Carta in Lincoln. You know, it's Lincoln Cathedral, Lincoln County, yeah, it's worth going. Shout out there. No, we missed the formatting, but use small paragraphs, much easier to read. And, uh, you know, even well, who say that paragraph can't be just one sentence? And, you know, bullet points and lists, even broken up, make it so much easier for the, uh, for the reader. Think about using those as well. Some tips there. Credit for others. And it's also a great opportunity to, uh, to set links up there, both internally and externally, numbers, and then very much clever formatting. But don't forget, please, who remembers him? Gosh, Jimmy, Jimmy Edwards. Don't write like a scholar. You can, you can write in what the Americans look at the folksy manner. Yeah, you know, this isn't an English lesson. It's probably worthwhile looking at sites such as Grammarly. You know, use Grammarly.com. You can write in your words into Grammarly, and they'll put it in good English. It's not like Ernie Wise, the play what I wrote and all that kind of stuff. So you may take some advantage from doing that. But please write like you. But don't forget. A good old picture. And yeah, great, simple picture, wonderful image, you know, wandering the world. And it's a, it's a blog there. But again, you can see the palm trees. We've got a very 
So always think about framing your blog with some nice pickies. But also, as you've mentioned, that the which there are many headlines to choose from, make it memorable. So here, and try and make it eye-catching. I'm just showing this an example again. It's very Americanized. People are freaking out about what the superfood can do. And a fantastic image of the of the blue there uh, and the orange. Really an eye-catching, Google-friendly title will really be advantageous. And here is a classic example of this adventure travel blog. Again, you can see how they've written it. Zion, 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 Advent, I think, uh, adventure. And, you know, plan your southern, you know, Zion, Zion, uh, Utah adventure. And you can see hikes, guides, things to do. Again, it's shaped very much by the image and the headline. So it's drawing you in. So again, this is just a travel blog. But again, it follows that same principle about making it very accessible for the reader. And here, you've got back onto my favorite subject, food. And you've got, you know, you've got a chef here doing something worth checking out. Grossy Pelosi, again, recipe-based, image, headline, lots of tips in there, but again, very clever formatting, and you're drawn in there by the, by the image. So a couple of blogs, and I'll share a couple there in a moment or two as well because moving swiftly along, you've got to think about the images. Can't be good image. Now, all of you will have a smartphone, but there's also plenty of places to go to get free images. Some of you with speedy hands will be all taking an image, you'll get a copy of that with seven sites. You go, some of which I cannot claim to have used them all, but certainly Canva and Pixabay, great places to go to get free images. So you can get stock images that may be well, ideal for your blog. You don't just have to use them on your blog, though. You can use them on your social media and on your website elsewhere. But plenty of places to go. And also under Google, if you're doing a search under Google, you want to see, to find images that are unfiltered by license. So under an advanced Google search, don't go stealing things, otherwise you get into trouble. And there are some clever people. I was, have a client who uh, has been using hook and loop. They couldn't use Velcro. Velcro as a business have fancy software, put it in these layman's terms, the fancy software that crawls the web looking for people who are borrowing on using their trademark, and as do um, education examiners as well. So this is called best practice, not copying. Now, what's up next in our how to write a blog? Please, please, please don't forget the call to action. Again, as I said earlier, a blog is writing something in a non-salesy way. But please, you don't miss the opportunity to think about, again, for further education, for further information, subscribe to Main List, download our book, sign up now. You can use all those things, again, and in setting up links, and often if you're using the likes of Bitly links or other links, we can measure how many people have clicked it. So please always remember, the opportunity for some form of call to action. Aha. As mentioned a short while ago, please don't forget to do the old optimization. So write your blog first and then optimize it afterwards. I think it's unwise to do it the other way. And this, if we come back to the aforementioned Cookies, which I could actually contrive into a joke about cookies uh, on Google. Actually, interesting enough, in 2023, cookies and in depositing on websites is looking 
Google are looking to uh, to, to remove that. It's worked, it was signposted last week, so it's going to change the whole principle uh, relating to retargeting. So watch your space. So if you're doing that again, thinking about using the keywords that you, from your research and shoehorning them into the article, but to use the exact phrase in the headline and also to make the title Google friendly, we saw how to make cookies without using eggs, the description and the alt text. Now, I know my friend Derek on the call, he was asking me last week, he said, boy, Simon, he said, do you, how often do you put keywords in article? I've told keyword stuffing isn't the right thing to do. I said, correct, you only have stuffing at Christmas. But do not, do not, do not stuff keywords. Google will put you on the naughty step. So please don't do that. So it's judiciously use keywords. And for those of you who may be on a WordPress website, one of the best plugins to use, and it may have plug in elsewhere, is the Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T. And that is a fantastic plugin tool. It'll help you with your keywords to make sure they're in the, the URLs, the titles, the descriptions, and the text of your images. So you're not stuffing your article because it also won't read right. So you don't hammer your keywords in there, but you make sure they are there in the right places. Here is all about alt text because I thought I'd put this in again for the principle, you know, the, you, you're describing the image to Google. You know it's a man taking a photograph with a professional camera, but you want to put that in there. It, it may be a completely different description, but you want the, the, the image to be described in a Google-friendly way. So that is the use of alt text. I think it's alternative text, I think it's helpful. But don't forget, whatever you've written, can be edited. Oh, yes, it can. And many good blogs are known as evergreen blogs. If you write something now, you can re we can edit it and repost it again. So if we come back to our baking example. For all we know, in a year's time, there could be some magic new ingredient or a new way or something that you want to add a little bit of this or a bit of that, he says. That sounded like all Hollywood there, uh, into, into it, to, to it. So you want to edit your articles and repurpose them. So don't forget, it's not like the school where you get a red pen, you could never get rid of that. Mm. So then you want to promote it. You've written it, made it keyword friendly, and you're going to promote it. How are you going to promote it? Well, the natural place is to put it on your website. Obvious reasons, you want to draw traffic into your site, make it landing pages, but then you're looking for the opportunity, as I mentioned, the calls to action to get people to subscribe or do anything else. So first place probably would be your website. Now, some people also argue that is a blog different to the website? Do I actually have my own separate blog page to my website? Personally, I would not advocate that. I would have it as part of your website. It could, in fact, be a standalone. So it becomes some, some of your visitors to your site may only just look at the blog page and may link elsewhere, but I think it would be hugely advantageous to draw all your traffic into one URL into one site, which is what I would do and make them make the blog landing pages. Obviously, the blog then can be can be read not just on a desktop, a tablet, but also on your mobile device. Now, one of the major issues often with a website is that many businesses make an error on their website and don't offer social sharing functions. So it's not just linking to Instagram or Pinterest or YouTube, it's having the ability to 
share the article. Or you can share it on WhatsApp or share it by email. Just introducing social sharing functions because if Mr. Jones arrives and reads it, what you would love them to do is to share it, make it easy for them. Think on your site to add social sharing functions, but critically, then to link your uh, page to your social media or vice versa. You've got a limited number of characters on Twitter, for example, 280. So you write, uh, you tweet, but then you'd set up a URL on Twitter and link back to your site. Now, if you use the likes of Owly, O W L dot L Y or Bitly, B I T dot L Y, for a great link shortness, they are. So you can reduce the number of characters in your tweets and also set up measurements of those. And also, one of the huge advantages of things like those link shortness, you can brand the links. So check out the likes of Bitly. But don't forget from all your social media platforms, feel free to link back. Put links up on the screen because many of you may be going business to business setting and you would write your blog on your website, but you also may have a, a three quarter version or a limited version or even the full version on your LinkedIn. So you're creating the content elsewhere or an executive summary. Great place to go for posting there and also naturally on, on Facebook as well. But you can also blog because all the people on this particular list that you are looking at right now have a lot more visitors than you do and here is a place to become an influencer so medium is often considered to be the, uh, the manchester united of uh, guest blogs and uh, the others are still in the premier league but that's the one that helps and has the most credence but there may well be others where are specialists in your sphere these are very, very wide ranging topics, but might want to check those out. If you're creating content with a blog, you can probably use it seven, eight, nine times, not just on your site, on your social media, guest blogging, sanitized elsewhere. You also might want to choose it for the AMP, which is the accelerated mobile page, which is used by Google to help with search results. So often the, it's worth checking this out, that Google will use this to help decide which pages are added to the carousels. You can imagine looking at Google, you see the, the search bar. Often then you see the carousel, the images underneath it. So if you've got great content that's Google friendly and keyword friendly, you may find your blog there. You also may find that under the featured snippets, which is where you see people also ask them questions that people ask. So creating great images, great content, and a Q&A, the fighting chance of getting on the first page of Google. The AMP, you know, is there. It makes the, using it that way, it will help um, the, the blog speed on the mobile site. So it's very much there to make, it, to make the, the pages accessible and to be found and read on small devices. So let me conclude today by just showing you some examples that you may wish to visit afterward to have a little look. Now, this first one is, uh, is simply, I wouldn't say it's right, Tabitha or Tabitha, which is a lifestyle blogger. So there you've got some lovely images, both of, of Tabitha, or is it Tabitha? And all the different uh, topics there. But again, it's an atypical blog page, but you can see the type of questions, the answers, the content. But the images are sort of thought provoking and, and, and very accessible, and the headlines as well, accordingly. Then you go to the likes of Shot from the Street. Again, this is a slightly different, this is a fashion blog. And you can see the whole um, principle, uh, giving advice there on what goes with what, etc. And you know it's drawn in by 
the, the images of the content underneath. Part of my personal favorite, which is taking something that's slightly different, is the Grawl Brownstone Boys restoration business. Something that's absolutely tailor made for blogging. The before and the after, the aspiration element to do that, even you know, to an extent, uh, IKEA or IKEA uh, by the same principle. You know, empty room, fantastic room to live in, sleep in, whatever it might be. And here, we've used blogging for that very purpose to show the type of projects they're working on, you're involved with. So again, each and every one of you, irrespective of the business, can actually demonstrate your expertise and the value you can offer through a blog. So three examples there that's worth checking out and just seeing what works for them and how engaged they are. So, that, as always, it might be my pleasure. So if anybody has any questions, we try and do everything in sort of a, you know, three quarters of an hour or so. so. If you've got any particular questions, I'll be looking on the chat line in a moment. But I'd like you in the meantime to thank you. It's always a pleasure, it's heartwarming to know that, the, that uh, many of you have given up your uh, Tuesday afternoon to, to visit me and to, to learn. And I always say, if I brought a smile to your face and you've gone away with learning and you, you feel that you can help your business, my job is done. And next week for our final webinar of July, we'll all be talking about brand, brand identity, brand authenticity. So everything you want to know about brand, naturally a blog is content marketing and is sort of the blood that pumps around the body of the brand in many people's eyes. So the likes of the Brownstone Boys and others will be their voice to the market and their voice to customers through the content they put out there. So brand is on our agenda for next week. I'm now going to stop sharing. I'm going to reach for the chat line and see if anyone has any heart, any questions. What have we got? Derek has answered. So, yes, Jean has thanked me. So, it's, thank you, Jean, for attending. Derek, what is the optimum blog post length on an e commerce site? Currently, I'm producing content around a thousand to a thousand word, 1200 words per article. It's a great question. I only covered it in brief. I would always say go beyond the 300 word, uh, 300. And if you're using the likes of WordPress to blog on and you're using the likes of Yoast, they will also refer and tell you about the content of the article. Personally, I think an article should, for most dangerous one, because you remember the number, it is about the quality of the content. But somewhere, if you can get around about six or 700 words, you can get your message across. Also, if you're writing a longer article, there's a danger of losing your audience. But the other side of it is, if you're writing a 1300 word article, if people, visitors are staying on your website for longer, your, work, your website will have greater credibility. Google knows if customers are staying on your website for long periods of time. Therefore, you've got authority. Therefore, you've got higher, you've got a better user experience, and your website will have higher domain authority. So is that it's a is the dividing line between boring the pants off people by writing tones, keeping people on your website for a long period of time, and giving somebody a five-minute read? I hope I've answered that question. If you're writing, you know, if you're reading a great book, you don't tend to worry about the length of it. You know, if you're reading Alan Titchmarsh novels, you know, you want the end, you want the end to be improved by bringing it a lot closer to the start. But hopefully that has answered your question, Derek. With a long answer to a short question, wouldn't it? Is there any more for any more? 
If not, do not worry, because there is in your inbox tomorrow, you will find me writing to you with the slides, with a link to this recording and an invitation to next week's brand blog, brand blog, kind of brand webinar. And also for those of you who fancy a trip to North Ferriby, to see if I actually have life beneath this chin, see if I've got legs. You can, I would love to see you there for some face to face learning. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll bid you fond farewell. <laughs>